Hey folks, Deb from Queer Astrology. I will give it a few moments for people to join and, uh, and gather in. Um, my special guests today will be Sam and Aussie from the Netflix series Ultimatum Queer Love, the only surviving couple from, uh, from that season. Um, so we are, I'm going to read their individual charts and then I am also going to read their senestry or how they, how their compatibility is with each other. So how we're going to do this <clears throat> is while we're waiting for Sam and Aussie to arrive, I'm going to start by explaining astrology and the basics of it. So you have an idea of where we're coming from when we talk about their synastry, because this is a lot of information and it can be quite overwhelming. So to understand, hey, um, to understand a little more about um, about what we're even looking at, then, you know, hold on here. Let me see if I can. I don't think I can invite. OK, and. Let me see if I can add them really quick or send off to them. How do I do that? Uh, yes, there we go. <laughs> um, invite. Let me find Sam. Unless Sam just came in and I missed it. Hold on. There you are. Okay. Okay. So I just I just invited uh, Sam and Aussie. They'll be together on. They'll be right here in a moment uh, once they come in. But let me start out with um, with Sam's natal chart behind me, okay? Now you can see behind me, this is a round chart, okay? What the heck does this mean? <laughs> well, in astrology, you may be used to seeing like the list of, oh, my sun means this, my moon means this, those kinds of things, but not really understand what it means. Well, let's talk about the four major parts of astrology. Okay, the first part I want to talk about is the signs. You can see this gray ring around the edge. Well, everybody has all 12 signs in their chart. So that's what these are right here. There's 30 degrees each. So 12 of them make 360 degrees, hence the circle. Okay, now we all have all 12, but it depends on where they're going to land. Okay, depending on where your rising sign hits. Now, the rising sign is always here on the cusp of the first house. What's a house in astrology? You can see here in the middle, we have these 12 numbers. Okay. I will explain that, Simone. Just stay with me for a second. So right here, you can see how uh, we have one and we go counterclockwise to 12. And each of these little slices of pie are a part of somebody's life. Okay. So if that's the case, we have an attitude or a personality that we get from the signs, like what we read when we, um, there you are. <laughs> I think I already said you that thing, didn't I? Sam, but hang on. I want to make sure. Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, where was I? Oh yeah, houses. Okay, so houses are part of your life and these personalities are, are the personality given, okay? Now these are focus points. They're astral bodies. We're talking about the planets and then there's a luminary like the sun and the moon. Now there's thousands of these. So you don't actually have empty houses. Okay. We're just looking at the biggest ones like the planets because they're the largest astral bodies in our solar system. And in astrology, we're earth centric. So we're in the middle and everything else goes around, right? Now, as we look and we figure all that out, these are going to have the personality of this sign, okay? And they will have the, um, the effect on a certain part of your life being as whatever the house happens to be in, okay? Um, what does the rising sign mean for your current life? Your rising sign is the constellation, because these, these all represent a constellation, the signs. It's the constellation that was rising on the eastern horizon at the moment that you were born. So your birth chart doesn't change. What you may be talking about is a uh, transit chart. And transit charts are when you're comparing your current or birth chart to or your birth chart to a current day or a random day or an event. Um, that's where you may find some of that. Those are called uh, progressive charts. Okay. Now what I do, the other fourth element that I want to talk about, which is actually 
probably the most important thing that we're going to be talking about today, because not only do we use it in your synastry, but we also use it um, in birth charts. Okay. These right here. Okay. These are the five major aspects that we talk about in astrology. What is an aspect? It's those lines that you see in the middle, which I'll go to a chart in a moment to show you. Um, and in the case of conjunction, you don't see the line because that's two points that are very close together. But the significance of this is those focus points are those planets that are within a chart. They represent a certain kind of focus. Then we want to know how those focus points relate to each other. So as an example, in an individual's chart, now this is Sam's chart with the aspects turned on. Okay, so now that the aspects are turned on, we can see how Sam might have certain relations within her own personal chart. And in astrology and even in compatibility and synastry in general, we want to read both individuals to make sure we're understanding the individual before we talk about how their focuses get along with each other. Okay, so as an example, Sam is a, an, an Aquarius sun, okay, a Sagittarius rising, and her moon happens to be in Aries. But there's something that is really probably all of you are like, wow, look at all those points right there, right? And all four of these are in Capricorn. Actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, I believe it's in Capricorn Mars as well. Uh, oh, I can look. Just double check. <laughs> yes. Um, so the fact that, that Sam has four placements or what we call a stellium, which is a chart pattern. Okay. Aspects can become patterns. You may have heard of a grand trine. This is a trine. A grand trine is when you have more than two points, you add another point that becomes a grand trine. Okay. So different placement or different, um, aspect, aspect points can create interesting patterns like cradles or stars of David or grand sextiles, whatever you want to call it. And um, the most common is something called a T-square. And there's there are also like um, bucket shapes and bowl shapes and all of that sort of thing, right? And those chart patterns, the stellium that I was just mentioning, which is what Sam has a Capricorn stellium here. And what that signifies is that she has a lot of Capricorn placements, okay? And she's going to have a lot of Capricorn energy. It happens to rule her second house. Now this, somebody had asked, what do you do if you have an empty, if you have an empty house? Well, and I said, you don't, you don't have an empty house because what you have is the ruler for that. Okay, so like as an example, you start with your ascendant, it rules your entire chart and the first house. Okay, then you follow these lines. The second house is ruled by Capricorn. This lead line for the third house, it's ruled by Aquarius. The fourth house is ruled by Pisces because we read counterclockwise. So the lead line, whatever, even if it's one degree, that is the ruler for that house. Okay, so like as an example, Sam has an Aries moon, but we're talking about Aries ruling the fifth house of creativity and pleasure, which means she's going to be very quick in her creativity and quick to act. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't see Sam in here yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can get them in. I, I don't talk a lot about the interception of houses because in my opinion, as, as somebody who's trying to teach astrology at a base level and then go from there, once we start talking about intercepted houses, like people are trying to figure out what a house is. <laughs> so I don't usually bring that up. It can add to the confusion of the situation for sure. Um, but uh, I started with Sam's chart because before they come in, because Sam and Aussie will be joining us here momentarily, and we're going to talk about their synastry chart. Um, I, I wanted to talk about um, both Sam and Aussie's individual charts, okay? So as I was saying, when we're talking about the individuals, okay, Sam is, as I said, an Aquarius sun. Aquarius, their energy is the alien, right? And the sun is your ego, okay? So she has quite a unique kind of ego and perspective on things. And it happens to be in the second house of value and possession. Okay. So that means she has a very unique idea of what's valuable and the ability to adapt and be very altruistic 
in, in the things that she values. Um, now, when we talk about the moon, the moon is your emotion. Okay. And Sam's emotion or her moon is in Aries and it's in the fourth house of home, which means she's very quick to emotionally react to anything that has to do with her home life or her domestic life in general. Okay. Now we talk about the rising sign. The rising sign is your first impression, kind of how people like think of you when they first meet you. And for Sam as a Sagittarius rising, they can see this experience, this education, this spirituality that comes out of them. Um, and that's, that's how she is represented, uh, represented, if you will. Now, when we talk about the other of the big six that I like to talk about, we talk about right here, this is Mercury. It has the little devil horn looking things. That is communication. That's obviously important in relationships in general, right? And for, for Sam, it happens to be that something that she values, okay? And on top of that, I don't know where I get that, okay, um, is, is very structured communication, okay? Hey! Uh-oh. Hi! Hi. Hi. Hey. Hi, you two. How are you? Pretty good. good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Everybody, this is Sam and Aussie, in case they actually need an introduction. Um, or Aussie <laughs> and Sam, if you will, <laughs> as you're looking. Um, and just so everybody knows, Aussie's pronouns are Aussie. And Sam is she, her. So I'm just letting everybody know that. Uh, and reminder that I do have a moderator in here, folks. But let's keep it, let's keep it nice and calm and everybody chill, okay? <laughs> We're, you know, I know you all might have a lot of questions and stuff. And we'll try to get to some of those towards the end. But this is actually more for these two. So they can hear kind of about their compatibility. Uh, and you guys get to be along for the ride, all right? So, yeah, somebody just said, no wonder Sam is, um, is so grounded. We're not talking about Capricorn stellium. Um, um. <laughs> because uh, as I was saying to everybody, I like to, and Aussie, I'll read your chart in a moment. I started with Sam because she's gotten to see me read her chart a little bit. So I started with her. But uh, it's important, even when we're going to talk about sedentary, to talk about your individual charts. Because you are individual people. So let's kind of get the personality of what, your chart is saying about you and then we're going to compare how you two get along all right so i was just getting to i had just talked about the sun moon and rising for sam okay the sun the ego aquarius here in this house the moon aries here in this house and rising over here and i was just getting to the rest of the big six as we call them because we have big three which are those three and then we have mercury Venus and Mars, which obviously in relationships are big things, right? How you communicate, how you are able to surrender and your drive or what you want to be in control of. So for Sam, all of those are in Capricorn, okay? Um, And so Capricorn, their energy is about efficiency and effectiveness, right? So when it comes to um, when it comes to communication, you want to be to the point like this could have been an email. I don't know why we had a meeting about this, right? Um, And when it comes to surrendering, you need somebody to come to you and show you that they know what they're doing. They have the experience. Otherwise, you're like, I should just do it myself, right? Because you also have the Capricorn in Mars. And first of all, that's the SEGS God placement. So congratulations to you and Aussie for that one. Um, (laughs) Yeah, Aussie's agreeing. Yeah. but they're not the ones to mess with. The reason why Capricorn Mars is that is because Capricorns tend to be very good at whatever they're doing. So if you put Mars or drive or what they want to be in control of into that, they're not the ones to mess with. They have receipts from 2008. Okay. Don't do it. So that's, that's what we're talking about here. So that's the kind of energy you have a lot of structure, but at the same time, your ego is in that air, right? It's that uniqueness and altruistic. And these are all in your second house, which is value and possession, okay? So you like to have high value in things. Now, on top of that, we also have your moon, which is in the fire sign of Aries, right? And your emotions get really fiery and can get quickly, especially in your domestic life. You can be defensive of that. You can be very protective of it, you know? So that indicates that. And sad rising, as a fellow sad rising, we come off as a bit of a know-it-all at the beginning, but that's because we do know it all, you know? We're not talking about anything we don't know, that's why. 
<laughs> so, um, but you also come off as very spiritual and experienced and um, educated. You know, that's that's the, how the Sagittarius comes off. Now, let's look at Aussie's chart, okay? And here we go, Aussie. Are you ready for this? <laughs> okay, so Aussie is a Gemini sun, which we can see right here. And this is in the 11th house. This is your social house, okay? So Gemini suns, again, it's your ego. But Gemini is duality, right? It's kind of like um, all air signs in general have a little bit of duality, but Geminis are literally called the twins. They're, 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 they're little, what do you want to call it? Uh, uh, what is that? Like a, not a, a mascot, I guess? A dichotomy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, see, hold on. That's a big word. Let me mark it up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> got dichotomy on the board folks so <laughs> they're like uh that's their uh yes their dichotomy if you will is the twins right and what that is is they're very social they're ruled by mercury so they're um a lot of communication okay so there's this this ex this need for external communication especially amongst social activities so you're very i mean we saw it on the show but you have great friends you rely a lot on them socially how you communicate and process things is for your ego because you also even though we're, we're going to talk about it in a minute but your mercury is here which is how you communicate so you like to communicate socially in fact it's probably where you feel the most comfortable like you can tell your stories and you can like you know express yourself um now as we talk about moon you have a scorpio moon my uh my main partner has a scorpio moon as well <laughs> so i understand them a little bit you know just a little bit um there it's a very unique placement to have in fact there's a lot of psychic ability within a scorpio moon in my experience uh a lot of um ability to manifest things that they want um and for you it happens to be in the third house of communication so you will probably manifest through communication that transforms who you are right so that's that's what you're looking at because because um, Scorpio is about transformation. So that's their main thing and they're intense. And your emotions can be confusing to you sometimes because they're so intense and other people may not be able to handle them, except for maybe somebody like an Aries moon, okay? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's like, okay, okay, you know? <laughs> like, okay, I understand. I get a little heated sometimes to do that. So all right, you know? um <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get to center street but yeah um <laughs> and then uh but the other part i want to talk about is that you're a cancer rising so you also have a water sign rising water is about emotion okay and cancer is the cardinal water sign there's three modes in astrology cardinal are the uh the signs that start the different seasons okay so like cancer as an example starts summer and they are um each of them have their own baseline so um cancers are the initiator of emotion whereas aries is the initiator of energy for fire uh capricorn is the initiator of structure okay and uh libra is the initiation of intelligence for the air signs so having this as your rising sign you come off as very emotional we also got to see that you're sensitive you have a, an, a very deep emotional capacity that can sometimes be overwhelming for you Okay. I mean, it's right there. It shows you. You also have another um, high segs placement, just saying, with the Jupiter and Leo. So another round of applause on the other way. Uh-huh. Uh, in the first house of self. So the more, the more you learn about yourself in that way, the more you'll be able to please other people, just saying. So <laughs> now let's talk about, um, let's talk about your, your Venus and Mars. Okay. Now what's interesting is you both have your Venus and Mars in the same sign. Okay. A lot of people are like, well, what does that mean? Cause they're, they're opposites in a way, right? One is your drive and what you want to be in control of. And the other one is how you surrender or where you want to find some vulnerability. So what's interesting is you both happen to have earth, <laughs> earth ones. Okay. Sam's is cardinal though. So because she has the initiation of the structure, Hey, Natasha, Natasha's sending love. Um, <laughs> you, because you're the initiator of structure, now, what, what Aussie is going to be doing is taking that kind of structure because it's literally split between your ninth house of experience and your 10th house of ambition. So you're going to be able to take the structure that Stan builds for you and adjust it. 
and like you'll she can give you like something to start with and you can work with it that's what that indicates so when it comes to something that you want to be in charge of aussie because your mars is in the ninth house you want to be in charge of your experiences the value you're getting from them um whether or not it's something you you want to have in your life or not you want to make that judgment call because you only want to be you want to feel safe and secure i believe there was one scene where you're like i want to live with you for five years and then if we're good that's good right and that's exactly what a, a venus taurus sounds like you know and so your venus and taurus is in the 10th house of ambition so it could be that you have a fear of um you want to be vulnerable but you need somebody to have very good structure which of course a capricorn venus can have so that's excellent but it's in your 10th house which means you may be worried that um they're going to take away the value of your achievements so it'll be difficult for you to surrender unless somebody is bringing you value to their achievements as well as yours so you won't feel like they're going to bring you down so to speak right you want them to be at that high value with you and feel safe and secure in that okay so that being said folks again these lines that are in the middle here and let me just put this this thing up behind me so you can see the breakdown really quick okay so these are aspects and they're in you could see it in both sam and aussie's birth chart okay but we're also going to talk about it in their synastry chart and this is one of the most important things we talk about in synastry the aspects represent the relationship between two focus points or what you would call the planets or those luminaries, the astral bodies that we see in the chart, okay? So in, in a conjunction, that's when they're right next to each other. So there's no line represented for that because they're on top of each other. And that energy is when they're within zero to 10 degrees and that's blended, okay? So we'll take those two points, what are their focus? And that energy is blended together, all right? Usually a favorable aspect, okay? Now, sextile will be represented by a purple line. It's 60 degrees apart, okay? And it is cooperative energy. It's kind of like, I also like to call it the bestie because it's kind of like you can be independent and do your own thing. But if you do want to do something together, it's fairly easy. It's very cooperative. It seems easier to get along, right? Uh, also it's considered a favorable aspect. Now, square is 90 degrees represented by a red line in order to scare the hell out of everyone. Um, but it's, even though it does also mean conflict, it's not necessarily a bad thing. You've heard me say this a lot. Um, it is associated with negative aspects, but in my experience of reading Sinistry charts, it's not because sometimes the right square is in the right place because there's something that one person doesn't like to do and the other person is on top of it. And that could be just shown by that square, but they figured it out. So it, does, it's, it doesn't bother them, you know? So that being said, then we have trine. Trine is represented by a green line and they're 120 degrees. And they're in sync or in a good flow because they're normally in the same element, okay? So like fire, earth, air, or water. So that indicates having a baseline, either it's energy or it's structure, right? So opposition, my favorite, is that push and pull energy. It's when they are 180 degrees across from each other and they're helping each other learn. Friction that creates action, if you will. Okay, so now let's talk about your synastry chart. Here we go, right here. Now, um, you can see, here's all the aspects I have them right here if you need to reference them, the ones I was just talking about, okay? And then these are the main, those big six that I was talking about, excluding the ascendant, which will be represented by ASC, both here for Aussie, because Aussie's on the outside edge, and Sam is here on the inside edge, okay? Now let's look at a couple of things. The first thing we're gonna look at is the square. So let's just talk about the square, right? So this is Sam's appearance or her first impression of things. This is Aussie's Saturn, okay? Saturn is a social planet. It's a planet of restriction, but also results. And where I see it in people's, their chart, individual charts, is usually somewhere where they could be more restricted in something to get the results they're looking for. Aussie has it in Virgo, okay? Speaking of somebody else who also has it in Virgo, I understand. Now, <laughs> what it indicates is that sometimes we get too bogged down in the details of things, trying to get to a certain level of perfection, okay? And it will drive everybody else crazy, but we're on it, right? So what it's saying is it's okay to do that because it's something that you're good at, but sometimes know when to call it quits, it's enough, okay? If you miss a comma, it's all right. You know, that kind of thing. 
Um, and for Sam, being a Sagittarius rising, it's like, if you had the experience, you would already know this, right? So there could be some of that, but you could also learn from each other. Whereas Sam can learn to think more about the details because Aussie has that under control and vice versa, where Sam's like, well, let me, let me show you what that's like. Let's experience it. So then you don't have to be so concerned about the details of it. Right. This is every day. <laughs> this is, on. This is our every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's just what the chart says. Okay. No, that's great. I love that. Um, but what, like, yeah, somebody was saying what? Um, they both have their sons and their partner seven. Yes, actually. Now, I don't talk about houses as much in Senestry, but we can tell this is Aussie's turn on the outside edge. And we know that Aussie has um, Aquarius in the seventh house, right? And so, Sam, your son is in the seventh house of relationships in Aussie's chart. Not in your chart, but in Aussie's chart. And then the same thing goes if you look whoop, right here. Here's the ascendant. So, if you look, Gemini is Sam's seventh house and your son is there. So, you know, and you're both air suns, which um, like on astrology in general, we're like, that's kind of an easy match. That's what the easy go to for like a bunch of, you're compatible with other air signs, right? Sure, that could be easy, but that's just because they have the baseline of intelligence. It takes the whole chart to have some sort of compatibility, not just because you're air signs or not just because you're earth signs. Like we saw on Love is Blind with uh, Jackie and Marshall. Because Jackie's a Capricorn, Marshall is a Virgo. Their structures kept running into each other, you know? And then Jackie with Josh, who's a Gemini, much better for her, you know? And you wouldn't normally, as an astrologer, say that, but that's how it ended up working out, right? And it's because if you look at their Senestry charts, I, you, if anybody caught that live and Josh came in too, we were all talking about it, it's crazy, the chart difference. So, and speaking of that, catch my, um, I was just on a podcast with Queer Connections, who is a queer dating coach, okay? Specializing in people of color, by the way, but um, make sure you check that out. Queer Connections is the podcast, okay? Sorry, I wanted to drop that in there because it just dropped today. Um, and we talk about uh, synastry, basically, compatibility in astrology. So make sure you look at that. Um, back to you all, all right? We're here for these two, I'm sorry. Okay. So <laughs> let's talk about the, uh, the sextile one right here, okay? The sextile, as I was saying before, is cooperative energy, okay? You have one sextile here, but where it is is kind of interesting because it happens to be Sam's Mars, so what she wants to be dominant over, and in her, in her case, efficiency and effectiveness, because it's under Capricorn, right? To Aussie's Scorpio Moon. Now, the reason why this gets along really well is I, I like to call Scorpios Capricorn light in a lot of way because they come off similarly. The difference is that Scorpio is more of an investigator and Capricorn is more about the receipts, the structure, right? So like Aussie, as an example, because you are emotionally investigating things, you're like, I need, I, I want to know that you're being truthful with me, that I have all the information and, and all that. And Capricorn Mars has no problem doing that because not only can they show you that they have the information, they can back it up, you know? And somebody just said a white Scorpio and yeah, that's hysterical because just so you know, for some reason, a lot of black people are Scorpios. Does anybody else know what that is? That's so fascinating that somebody just said that. I thought it was just me that knew that. So, <laughs> um, uh, but there's no Scorpios on the screen, just a Scorpio moon. Okay. Um, so now let's talk about some of the, uh, the, the conjunctions. Okay. Which is, this is the blended one. All right. Which could be hard to see on this. How do we know for sure? Right. Let's look here. I'll show you on this thing. Cause I wrote all your, your different ones down here and they, we don't even have any that are registering as blended energy. So in my opinion though, it looks like, <laughs> Sam's Jupiter is really close to Aussie's communication. Now, Aussie, how do you feel about communicating? Oh, I, I love communicating. I think I'm very verbose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told. <laughs> so, like, as an example, like having Mercury in Gemini, which Mercury rules Gemini, it means that you talk a lot, 
Okay. Now, folks, I want to point out they filmed 80,000 hours for this show or something along those lines and used nine, nine hours. Okay. So you can imagine how many things were in there. Obviously, things are cut for dramatic instance and whatnot, but um, there was a lot of talking. <laughs> I'm sure that we did not get to see. So um, it's yep. interesting. I just wanted to give you a chance to, to, to say that because what's interesting about this comparison right here, and if it really is, which I believe it is, and that is that because Jupiter represents expansion for Sam, right? And it's in Cancer, okay? So she has a deep emotional capacity that helps her to expand. We saw that on the show as well. Like she had the capacity to go out and comfort Tiff, where a lot of people might not have been able to do that right um and so that's that's just that's what's interesting about that is that that she can have the patience and understanding to allow you to speak and get through it right and be like all right okay yeah okay that's valid and allowing you to speak is honestly half the battle because sometimes being heard is the hardest part for for uh gemini mercuries because you want to communicate it's literally drives you right um you'd like you have to get it out you have to express it so Sam being able to have that deep emotional capacity to do that is a really great sign, okay? Now let, look at all these trines, folks, okay? All these trines right here, again, this is where I was talking about their Mars and Venus in both of them. Here's Aussies up here, Venus, Mars, okay? MC, by the way, Midhaven, point of ambition, always on the cusp of your 10th house, okay? So all of that is trining or in, they're in that good flow, right? Because they have the same baseline, structure because earth signs okay in this case and it's the same kind of thing but here we also have sam's mercury so how sam communicates is going to help aussie surrender right that's important because again mm -hmm. so that's i mean <laughs> that's that's a great sign and then right here as i was telling you both before both both suns are air right so another trine right here that's intelligence. So your egos are both based upon intelligence. Aussie, you're more geared toward the storytelling aspect of it, whereas Sam is more about the altruistic outlook of it. Okay. So that's, that's, but that can be very blended and good. You're not, you're in a similar, like you're in the same car, you know, but you're like, have your headphones on listening to different tunes. That's kind of what I'm like getting at right there. Um, and you can help each other with that. You can be like, I'm sorry. You know, and that's just kind of how you can work together. So that's an interesting one. Now, again, with with Aussies, Venus and Mars. OK, we're also trying down here to Sam's MC. So Aussie and Sam, your MCs or your point of ambition are also trining. OK, again, Earth structure. So for Aussie value, you're looking for value, security in your achievements. OK, staying power. All right. And now Sam is the one that's looking at the details. <laughs> when it comes to achievements, she's, I mean, she released a list today. <laughs> okay. Yeah. To make it easier. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. who, Sam? <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. I mean, not that it didn't, but I'm, <laughs> you know, but that's what I mean. Like, you're like, it doesn't matter if it's for me. It helps every, I do the same stuff. I also have a Virgo MC. Okay, so yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, those of us who are sad risings tend to have Virgo MCs is the most common for us. So uh, that makes sense. Now, when we talk about, um, let's look at this trine right here, because this is your Jupiter, Sam. So how you expand, again, in Cancer, that deep emotional capacity, right? And it's actually in, technically, it's in Aussie's 12th house of, of their intuition. So you, you also have this interesting kind of intuitive connection to each other because it is trying to Aussie's moon. And remember how I said that Scorpio is a little bit psychic, like sometimes they, they don't trust it because they don't trust anything. So that's their, their thing about it. Um, Scorpios in general, any high Scorpio placement, if it's their moon, it's emotion, right? If it's their ego, it's the or sun, it's ego. If it's their rising, it's their like impression. So when you're talking to them about any of those things, they are not believing you. <laughs> they don't believe what you're telling them until they have the evidence to believe, okay? 
Um, they, again, need some receipts or some sort of deep emotional capacity because these are both water signs, okay? So emotional investigator, emo in-depth in emotional capacity. So when you are upset, Aussie, you can really find comfort in Sam. And, and in fact, Sam, it helps you to expand the more you can help Aussie with that, right? So, I mean, that's a pretty cool one, but guess what? Aussie's Jupiter is also trying to your moon. <laughs> Look at this right here. Oh Here's Aussie's God. Jupiter. So how Aussie expands to your Aries moon, okay? So what's interesting here, this is fire. So energy, initiation. Now, Aussie has Jupiter, right? This is the one I was saying, the other SEGS one. Congratulations. <laughs> Having Jupiter and Leo, Leo's energy is adoration. Okay, so you need words of encouragement in order to expand, right? Well, Sam's not gonna have any problem with that. Tell me what you want. What do you need? Okay, okay, because quick action just what do you need? Tell me what you need. Nobody's got time for this. What's happening, right? And and the more direct that Sam is with you, actually, the more you will expand because you need somebody to be caringly direct with you. So giving you the encouragement and that, that adoration that you need to get going, but also be like, okay, you've been in front of the mirror too long. Let's go. You know, <laughs> it's fine. Um, I was going to say, I thought we left all the cameras when we stopped filming. <laughs> like, are you doing our conversations? <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe that's what's going on there. <laughs> that's crazy, right? But that's so cool. I mean, like, what a cool chart. And like I said, I've read like a bunch of different synastry charts, and I've even done like research on them. And this is the kind of chart that's an ideal chart for compatibility, a soulmate chart, if you will. And I'm not just saying that to say that because I could, but that's not the case. I mean, literally, okay, it's like, it's the opposites and the similarities. So like, you're both air suns, but they're different. So it's, that's what I see in center, um, center street charts of soulmates a lot, oftentimes. Um, did you guys want to talk about the, the twin flame thing that we discussed before by chance? Oh, like us talk about it or are you talking about I it? I mean, if you, if you feel, if you want to, I mean, we talked about, uh, the twin flame aspect for those who may not know, um, because twin flames and soulmates are different and a lot of people sometimes get them mixed up. Um, in astrology, at least, how we discuss them is that um, a twin flame is one of the same soul that has been split. And usually you are born in different parts of the world, right? Which did happen for these two. But um, at the same time, it's uh, you usually it's difficult to find each other as twin flames. And if you do, you can usually uh, be isolate yourselves and kind of cut yourselves off from the rest of the world. So people who think that you might be a twin flame and whatnot, probably not. If you are, it's probably not the best thing. I'm not trying to be a downer. I'm just saying like danger, okay, <laughs> a little bit. Soulmates, on the other hand, you have plenty and numerous ones of those, not just romantic, okay, but all different kinds. And and that means like um, you kind of have a soul tribe, in my opinion, I think is what we were talking about a little bit. Um, and like you, when you're reincarnated, if you believe in that, or this trip in the meat suit, whatever you want to call it, we're all like here and you're probably surrounded by other people that you've been through other meat suit journeys with, right? So that's kind of what this is telling me is that you all have definitely been on additional meat suit journeys together. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we it's telling definitely me. That. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely feel that from the beginning. So <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's so good. Um, now, Sam, what is your feelings on labradorite? <laughs> like, <laughs> I see how much I like it, and it's my favorite crystal now. <laughs> it's one of my favorites as well. Uh, I love like the blue I actually do flashes. have a labradorite necklace that I had like a year before I met Aussie. So yeah. <laughs> And it was when Sam was just starting out with her tarot um, initiation, I suppose. So I was like, yeah, I really want to, I think it could help her with her tarot stuff as well. 
because it helps Absolutely. with the cycling abilities, right? Yeah, this and was it, my yes, first crystal necklace, and it's a labradorite. Oh my gosh, look at that! That's beautiful. <laughs> Labradorite's one of the best crystals, seriously. And speaking of Tam, uh, Sam's a. Uh, I just called you Tam because I tried to combine tarot <laughs> with Sam. Apparently, <laughs> Sam. Um, yeah, Sam is a tarot card reader, folks. So if you're not <laughs> following Sam on here or on, and I don't know what you're doing, but okay, get on there and do it, and get a reading. Like, how cool is that? Maybe we, we've talked about maybe we'll we'll do a live reading so you can see what it's like. Um, Sam can read me. I'll put myself out there like these two did for our entertainment. <laughs> it's only fair, right? <laughs> I'm actually going live at 530 my time. So from Oh, you our, are? Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe. Same time as me, I believe. I think we're on the same time right now. Um, because Arizona doesn't change times. So I always have to make sure I'm in calculating the hour difference <laughs> because nobody, I, I don't change it. Everybody else does. <laughs> I swear. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Very tricky. But yeah. Yeah. But you know, whatever works. Um, but yeah. Did you all have any questions or anything that you want to talk about or go over about your chart? I'm happy to answer any questions or if you want to open up for questions to the group about your astrology just about that folks <laughs> um i'm saying i don't want people to get crazy here like you know um but uh <laughs> yeah i mean how does it feel to be the only surviving couple from the show <laughs> it, it doesn't change anything really but um i suppose it's always a question that comes up but yeah we're just we're just doing us i don't know i don't know how it <laughs> yeah you're like <laughs> <laughs> totally well, that's too because it, all the filming technically happened a year and a half before everything came mm -hmm. out. So you know we had been together already for a year and a half since then. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's crazy. And like having being engaged that whole time and like low key being like we can't like what you know because y'all they filmed and finished filming in November of 2021. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So imagine having to deal with that. And then you all filmed the reunion this January, which was still yeah. freaking six months ago. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, like, I mean, I can't imagine having to just wait. Um, and from what I've heard, you all had to, like, like binge watch the episodes right before you filmed the reunion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I wait. <laughs> well, I, it was actually a little bit different version of uh, what we saw. So there was a little bit more oh. um, that we put in. But I wish I we had watched the the final version. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I think it would have given, um, well, particularly my storyline, I would have spoke up at the reunion if that was what I was given as a storyline. But yeah. yeah, surprising. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how are you supposed to know when they cut it after too? That's crazy. Yeah. So on yeah. top of the fact that you had to see it just before, like a year and a half later, and they didn't even show you the final cut of it. Yeah, I mean, how are you supposed to address certain things? Um, yeah. Not to I mention know. the, the um, I can't use the Voldemort term for this person because <laughs> everybody else think Alexi, and that's not what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the person that we no longer speak about from the show, yeah. um, for obvious reasons, um, that there is somewhat of a connection here uh to that it was interesting to see that you did you both were highly involved in that because you were with the partners right mm -hmm. and even getting to see like sam how sam um went out and helped tiff but also to see how you were immediately affected when when this person began speaking in the first place right and even ray was comforting you you could see it and it was interesting, like, as upset as I am about Netflix not necessarily warning us that this was about to happen, because I feel like we all just watched the show and now we're like, holy crap. All right. You know, so <laughs> um, uh, it it was interesting because on the other side of it, I think that without seeing that, we may not have gotten the full picture. And oh, wow. I think that, at least for, for, for more, more of us, I think there's some people that still don't necessarily see the full picture. That's on them. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, yeah. you yeah, were that, like, very that kind. That was the hardest week, though, from episode <laughs> eight 
till the finale because everyone was just like stuck in where it ended there and we're like but we know what happens in the reunion you'll all find out <laughs> but i know i can only imagine because like i as soon as the show came out i was in contact with all of you because i'm like this is a queer show yeah. astrology is our religion if i don't get on yeah. this Am I even yeah, am I yeah. even queer astrology if I don't do this? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and what's interesting is like you know binge watching each of them as they came out and like getting to to um, to uh, get to the point where <laughs> we got to see the finale and just even the first bank, the second bank, I was like, what? <laughs> what just happened? And yeah. then of course the end. Um, and also, I want to point out to everybody. Folks, you didn't see Aussie holding the ring? Hello? Oh. In the car, you have the ring. Yeah. Before you even go up to Sam. Yeah. I was like, they have, wait, Aussie has the ring. What is Aussie doing right now? <laughs> it was Are they not... Aussie was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I was waiting for Sam to react and she was not reacting. So I had to, oh, I was waiting Oh, she reacted. reacted. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she was like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a very Capricorn reaction, if I may. I um, like the Capricorn like, Are we like, going to move along with this or what? <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm different, but what? <laughs> oh, my God. oh, man. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. Oh. That's great. <laughs> well, thank you both. Thank you both for doing this. Um, I really appreciate it because I know y'all have been babies. Uh, and y'all catch Sam's live tonight at five thirty. You said Pacific Standard um, Time. Yes, five thirty okay. Pacific. <laughs> Pacific time. Oh, is that like am I old? Is that what you're trying to tell me right now, Sam? Huh? For anyone who's not in Pacific time. <laughs> right. Well, in old time, we say Pacific Standard Time, right, Aussie? Yeah, that's right. I don't know the difference. Just like East kids nowadays is... write the dollar sign after the number. I'm like, what do you, what's that? What is that? What is that, actually? I don't know. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> it makes more sense that you're saying like $17, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anyway um and also did you see I haven't announced it yet but um we know that um our friend <laughs> our friend Natasha is an Aries and is very impatient folks um so I'm gonna go ahead and announce that next Friday I will be reading Natasha and we are going to read her for compatibility so everybody calm down already I can already I can already feel the energy from all the, <laughs> all the folks out there. All the single ladies. Are, yeah, they're just ready. They're just ready to jump on. Um, <laughs> jump on and ride, so to speak. Uh, and I kind of think Natasha's here for it, so this should be fun. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so um, if you all would like a reading from me, uh, well, first of all, if you want a reading from Sam, go follow Sam. Aussie does not have a TikTok because Aussie is this. I'm older than Aussie by a tiny bit, but I understand. Um, you know, uh, I wouldn't have one either. I mean, it's part of my job now. I got to be on here. So, yeah. <laughs> but make sure you go follow Sam. You can follow Aussie on, on Instagram. Aussie has FOMO, I think is what yes. it is on there. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Or you can follow their couple page, keeping it saucy, which so good like such a good name right um keep saucy they're sa yeah. sam and aussie come on it's good. <laughs> um but yeah make sure you do that if you want a reading from me uh there's a link in all my social media bios that takes you to a link tree you can get a free natal chart just so you want to see what your natal chart looks like or there's other links to book readings with me all kinds including sinistry readings find your match or regular natal chart readings okay and they're very comprehensive. I like to teach while I'm doing them. So um, similar to this where I'll walk you through, but I'll literally walk you through every single step of it. So make sure you check that out. Uh, thank you too, again, very much for being here. 
Uh, and you both were, you know, my favorites. Sam already knew she was my favorite. I didn't have a chance to tell you, yeah, see. But, um, <laughs> but from the beginning, I have been a Sam stan from the beginning. <laughs> True, right, Sam? You yeah, heard me. Yeah. You already came in. Yeah. I knew. I saw it. Okay? Probably because of both Sagittarius risings. I just felt the kinship, you know? And a lot of Capricorn placement. Uh, I'm a Cap son, so, you know. Uh, and Mars, actually. How can you not love Sam? So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Get a room. Gross. Come on. <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> no, it is. It's cute. That's what I mean. <laughs> Uh, but thank you both oh again goodness. and yes if thank anybody missed it i will be posting this once it downloads i will post it um the first 15 minutes usually comes up on to instagram but the whole thing will be on my youtube channel and i'll put it in my bio to get quick and easy access to it all right so thank you two again and thank you to everybody who came and joined us for this live thank you to my moderator casey you're the best and uh, I love you guys. Okay, let's do this again soon. May maybe yeah. I'll see you later tonight, Sam. You know, maybe I'll pop on and say hi. Sounds so, good. all right. Well, cheers, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye.